Hello, you all. Uh, my name is Andrew Da Silva. I'm the new extension vegetable specialist. Um, I have talked with you before during the vegetable school 2022 about tomato production, about cucurbit uh, production as well, variety selection, fertilizer management, irrigation. And today we are switching gears a little bit and moving to high tunnel uh, vegetable production because I want to just introduce <clears throat> what are the challenges for high tunnel production, what you can grow there and how can you optimize the land and increase your profit. So if you are a small grower or a home garden, high, high tunnel is a very good um it's a very good approach for you to increase the value of your produce per area because you can produce sometimes that open field cannot do that. And if you are a high, um, a bigger grower, I saw that there from the from the quick survey that they did in the beginning, there are one or two uh, large growers here with twenty to fifty acres. That's also a good opportunity for you, like to provide uh, produce or to have produce for like big contracts or even farm markets in a time of the year that it's like not very common. For example, lettuce early during the winter or tomato early spring. So if you have gone to some grocery stores, you have seen that the price of tomato increase and that's because there's a shortage, shortage in the market. So if you have a high tuner, you can be able to sell your produce at those high high prices. So that's what you would be looking for if you're doing a high tunnel, uh, if you want to install a high tunnel. So this is going to be a very introductory one. Uh, so feel free to make questions if you have a particular question, how to do some specific thing like, oh, what fertilizer or how much water to apply or this, feel free to make a question. But first I want to start talking about what is a high tunnel. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but a high tunnel has the same green, is the same structure as a greenhouse. So it can be um, of lumber, it can be of um, aluminum. Um, just one quick thing, if you are doing for organic area, uh, lumber should not be treated, while if you have aluminum, uh, you don't have any problem. It's usually covered with one layer of uh, six mil film, and uh, it allows for uh, solar heat and uh, wind cooling. So you can allow for ventilation there because you can manually open uh, <clears throat> the sides of your tunnel. Like you see here, we have sides or here in the door, we can open the door. So this is a recently new high tunnel. Actually, we finished building these two high tunnels last Friday. So those two high tunnels are in our organic farm in Shelton, in the EV Smith. So if you guys want to visit and see how is a brand new high tunnel, that's a good opportunity in an organic field. And we can manage them as we want. Usually high tunnels can go from a 10 feet by up to nine, six, like 10 feet of width. Like here we have a 32 feet one and can from 10 to 32 wide and uh, it can go up to nine, six foot long. So this is what you're gonna be uh, dealing with. So if you have a smaller operation, so you can go with a 10 feet or a 20 feet, you just need to find what is the best specs that's gonna allow you for, um, for that's gonna allow for your area of production. So this is a brand new one, like I said, that we can open the side, so allow for ventilation. So during the summer, when you stew, well, like when you're gonna have like higher temperatures, you can open the sides and allow for ventilation to don't let like stress your plants with heat. Uh, those high tunnels, they can be permanent, which is the most common one. But nowadays you have those that are mobile one, and then you can move from one location to another. I will not get in depth about those that can be moved. I will focus on the permanent one because like 99.9% of the production we have in the state is going to be with permanent one. And here I just put a quick um, a quick uh, price per square feet, and that's how you're going to buy it. You can get it from like many uh, vendors, and uh, <clears throat> they are very uh, practical for installation, or you can build your own. But why I'm talking about to use those high tunnels? Because high tunnels have five points of benefits that I want to talk today, and that's going to be the focus of my uh, our conversation. So the first one is because high tunnel, they can extend growing season. What does it mean? We can plant 
like a particular crop early, early in the season, or we can plant when it's in the spring, or we can plant a particular crop later in the fall. So that's the benefit, and that's what I want to talk. Also, it can mitigate risks associated to weather, like we, we're going to talk a little bit later about like the cold, this frost that we just got this past weekend, or we can talk about heavy rainfall events. So that's some of the benefits of high tune. It can also reduce pest pressure. And we're going to talk about the permanent pest ex exclusion season. Dr. A has a very strong program on how to install those uh, exclusion system. And he would be a good person for you guys to approach in consideration for like how to avoid insects on, uh, on high tuna. Finally, how to manage those high tunas to enhance crop yield and how do you can get a higher quality. And as the last one, I want to talk, I'm just going to come back for how marketing uh, and what is the adv advantage of a high tuna on you to market your produce. So that's how we're going to be talking today. So first of all, uh, we're going to talk about extending growing seasons. So here I put, a, I put a quick graphic that is an ACES publications from Dr. Campbell on how to, when to grow vegetable crops in Alabama. And we have for all most of our common vegetable crops here that can also be grown in Alabama. So those are for open field. On high tunnels, you can get up to 60 days of early season. So just thinking about why a grower can why a open field grower can be will be harvesting their bell peppers in June, July, and August. A high tunnel grower could be harvesting May and April when there is no market, when, when there is no bell pepper in the market. So that's when you can have your higher price. So I just emphasize here in this sentence that a well-managed high tunnel growing, growing system utilizing plastic mulching with raised bed, mulching film, and row covers can length the growing season. It's a frost in a frost free period, which would be when the grower of the high tuna would be planting their bell pepper or whatever solanaceous by as much as 60 days. So that's the first advantage. I just show you examples with the bell pepper, but the same can be approached uh, by cabbage, which is a cool crop, which we usually harvest in October for the fall season or in April and May for the winter for the spring season. With a high tuna cabbage in a high tuna, you can harvest it in December or you can harvest it in January. So you don't have that impact of the frost that we usually do have in uh, during the winter. So those are the kind of advantage that uh, a high tuna uh, can provide for a grower. So, but to do that, you need to be careful. You need to prepare your planting dates. You need to be like, you need to keep track of your planting dates, your variety selections, when to plant and how to do the crop succession because you don't want to plant the same crop in the same location to avoid problems with disease and you don't want uh, to plant everything in the same day because you need to support a market. So you want to do different planting dates in, or, in order to provide that, um, to supply that market with your produce. So keep that in mind. Playing with planting dates and crop succession is an important thing for on a high tuna production. And how it can mitigate risks associated with the weather. Like I said before, we can have frost protection. This is a common temperature of the, this graph here shows a common uh, movement of uh, high temperature in uh, high, high maximum temperature in red, uh, minimum temperature in blue or how we have during the spring, early season, as we have January and then all the way to the end of the season. So you need to see when you are planting and what is the weather conditions for that. Because when you have a, a outside temperature is comp of, uh, a, a outside temperature is completely different from the, the temperature inside the high tunnel. So that's what you need to understand in order to optimize your production and select the right planting dates. One good thing of a high tuna, you don't have wind damage, you don't have a directly sun exposure, or you can even cover your high tunas with some shades so you can grow during the summer. And also you don't have the directly impact of rainfall events that you can like soak your field 
And though all those problems, frost, wind damage, directly sun exposure, and rainfall events can cause some of the common uh, disorder in produce, like I talked in my first class on tomato production, like sun scouting in tomatoes, or cracking because of rainfall events and the rapid growth of tomatoes, or even you can have some hails on by winds or <clears throat> other problems in your tomato. So those are the advantage of the tomato, it, of the, the high tunnels. It's gonna allow you to produce a high quality and reduce the pr problems with cools when you are harvesting your uh, produce. We had a very good example, like I said in the beginning this past week, for a um, for the frost protection. So this is just a graph where we have Friday, March 11, Saturday, March 12, March 13, March 14, March 15, which is today during this weekend. And this is the weather for Central Alabama. I got this from the a little bit for a weather station a little bit north of uh, Montgomery. So just for you to see on high tunnel production, the green area here represent optimum temperatures of outside for high tunnel production, while the red, it's gonna be too low for high tunnel production. So imagine if you, for field production, sorry. So imagine if you are a grower who thought that we already had our last, our last uh, frost of the year back in Jan in February, and you put your watermelons in the field, you put your tomato in the field, but then you suddenly had that lower temperatures on Saturday or even Sunday where it's got lows of 27. So that temperature will definitely kill your plants. So, but if you had a high tunnel, that would not be the case. You would have a reduction in growth which would delay your season, but it will not kill your plants. So that's a benefit of having a high tunnel. You don't have those problems with weather conditions that are very common on open field. Another topic that I'm gonna go with very quick on high tunnels is uh, that while the weather is uh, something beneficial, insect disease and weeds are also easier to control. However, keep in mind, if you don't do a proper integrated pest management, and that's what Dr. Sakura will be talking later, you're going to have a quick infestation. For example, these three white flies here in this leaf can quickly become a high population in a high tunnel because they have all favorable conditions to reproduce in a high tunnel. It's a closed environment. Rainfall cannot knock them, them down and they can quickly spread. They can also quickly grow aphids there from a small one. They can also be large aphids and they can start to transmit disease. And that's what Dr. Sakura will be talking later about the disease problems. But see, white flies can transmit crample virus so it can quickly destroy or outbreak your high tunnel production if not properly managed. Or you can have even other disease um, on um, for tomatoes, if you don't like have soil borne disease there, you will not be able to plant tomato for a while if you have problems there. So the management of disease and also weeds and insects in high tunnel must to be quickly managed. Otherwise you're gonna have that area infested and over a, one season to another, you will be losing a lot of yield potential. So here is just some example of some goose grass that can go. This is in an open field that we have, but in a high tunnel, it's gonna be very similar. It can quickly spread in the field and we can uh, even see more high tunnel. So my recommendation is if you are growing in a high tunnel and you will not plant in the summer because you are achieving highest yield in your market during early spring and late fall, don't go to the beach and leave your hot tunnel unattended. Please go ahead, plant a cover crop, try to manage problems that you have during the season with a cover crop or with any other uh, practice like solarization or any other um, cash crop during the summer. Otherwise, you're going to start to having more problems. 
we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about that. But I would like to give one of good examples that Dr. A usually talk on uh, about the pest exclusion because he has some permanent exclusion system to prevent uh, pe the pest establishment. Like the use of Shade Plus is a low cost option and easily available for the growers. So here is an example from Dr. A where we installed it. He installed it in a grower's field like this uh, Shade Claw, this net that will not allow insects to enter in the high tunnel. So that's why we say that is a permanent exclusion system. It's going to be all the time there. It is to allow air movement. And most important, it will avoid insects to get into your system. This is a particular photo that I really like from uh, Dr. A because we have like, we can see insects trying to get into the high tunnel, but our um, exclusion system is working the way how it was supposed to be. So that's one of the way that, because you can open your sides, allow air um, to ventilation, and it's still protected from your from insects. So switching gear from the IPM program that we're still gonna talk later, I wanna talk about, give you guys some options of how you can increase enhance your crop yield and your crop yield potential and your quality. In high tunnel, you want to plant high value crops. You have a high investment to build that high tunnel or to purchase that high tunnel, and you want to make that investment worth. So select crops that you're going to have higher yields, or I mean higher value. So tomato, cucumber, spinach, pepper, strawberry, strawberry, uh, summer squash, lettuce, and even cut, cut flowers are good options for, uh, for high tunnel production. I just put some photos here that we have from... Um, on some of the high tunnels uh, that we have played, tried before, and to show you that like those can all, all of those crops can be produced in high tunnels in the state of, of Alabama. But to do that, you need to do a quick three steps. So going, let's say you decide to plant on your high tunnel, you decide to move forward and yes, we're gonna do a high tunnel. Once you do a high tunnel, you select your crop, but now follow three steps in order for you to maximize your production and don't have problems. First step is do a crop rotation. Here we have a quick line of what crops should be succeed, succeed by the other ones. So let's go for a four step crop rotation plan. We have first, we grow, we, we grow our leaf green in area one. And then in the same area, which is the same high tunnel, we go with a fruit, a tomato, a bell pepper, Next season, we're gonna do some root. We can plant some carrots. We can plant some uh, potatoes there. Try to diversify. And then later you come with a legume, plant some beans there, plant some uh, dry bean there. So this way you can maximize your year. And next, and in the next season, you come for again with greens. This will minimize your problems with disease, with insects. Okay, so that's a good operation or a crop rotation that your operation should have in order to maximize yield. Once you select your crop, you build your, you created your plan of crop rotation. Then you're gonna talk about irrigation and fertilizer management in a high tune. I will not go in depth crop by crop. That should be uh, the fertilization of the crop by crop fertilization program. I'm gonna say follow the fertilizer recommendation and use soil samples. We have the vegetable book, uh, the vegetable handbook. We have the high to know uh, vegetable handbook. So you guys have all this information on hand. If you don't find it, contact your uh, your agent. They can they can contact us or you can contact us directly, and we're gonna help you with that. But one thing that I would like to emphasize on the fertilizer end is nowadays the price of fertilizer is just increasing. So consider use compost and manure. That's not a problem. Our current recommendation for goes from 120 to 400 gallons per 100 square feet in high tunnel production. And do that about 120 days before harvesting your crop. Follow the food safety is important in high tunnel production as well because you cannot apply raw manure before if you are harvesting your crop in 120 days. 
So apply it before that. Otherwise, if this is raw manure, if you have a composite manure or a treated manure, then you are good. But if not, do if it's a raw manure, 120 days before harvesting. And I would recommend you guys to apply this, uh, this uh, manure or this compost before planting in advance. So you can allow it for uh, nutrients to be available and follow up with some liquid fertilization. That's important for you to supply nutrients in the middle of the season. Don't only apply it pre-plant and think that, oh, we're going to be all fine. Remember, if you have like high temperatures, you're going to have mineralization of your nitrogen there. You're going to have maybe that nitrogen will not be available for your, uh, for your crop. Most importantly, a lot of composts, they are high in phosphorus. And then if they have high temperature, that phosphor will uh, knock other nutrients and will not allow plants to uptake other nutrients. So don't rely only in a high application of compost and manure. It's a very good approach to use manure. I would strongly recommend. However, follow with other fertilization. Don't only apply the manure. And Fertilizer or nutrients are linked in a way with irrigation that if you change one, you're going to affect the other. So irrigation is another key important aspect in a high tunnel, mostly because when you have a high tunnel, you are change the environment of your crop. You have higher temperatures that will enhance your plant growth. But those plant growth, that those higher or faster growth also require more water for your plants. So irrigation management becomes important in the high tunnel. So there are two things when we talk about the irrigation management. First is what system to use. The most common ones are drip and sprinkler irrigation. However, I would say, say no for sprinkler irrigation it's because you want to apply water in the soil, not in the plant. If you apply water in the plant, you will create optimum conditions for disease to get into your plants, and that's going to be a problem. So prioritize drip irrigation. If drip is not okay, it's not feasible for your operation, then it's okay to go with sprinkler or with an overhead irrigation. And most of the growers think that, oh, uh, sprinkler irrigation is a single, um, a single uh, investment, while drip we need to change every year. Yes, that's true. However, the likelihood for you to fail with a sprinkler is much higher than with a drip irrigation. Or you're going to need to have a higher investment in uh, disease and pest control with a sprinkler when compared with a drip. Also, a sprinkler require more water consumption than a drip. Consequently, you're going to have more cost with pumping that water. More water also is required. So, because of all that factors, I strongly recommend our growers to install drip irrigation in their high tunnels that they're going to they're gonna see a considerable uh, increase in yield and reduction in inputs. Once the, the irrigation system is determined, I would go with the irrigation schedule. If you have seen my talks about irrigation scheduling, I usually recommend um, three types of scheduling in Alabama for open field, which is the systematic, the crop evapotranspiration and soil moisture sensors. But that's for open field. In high tunnel, I would recommend, or you do the systematic irrigation, which requires a irrigation panel in your high tunnel, and you're gonna apply the same volume of water every day, or you're gonna run your system at the same time, or you're gonna use the soil moisture sensors where you're gonna apply water according to your soil, uh, your soil water availability. The reason why I don't recommend the crop water demand or using evapotranspiration is because the environmental conditions within a high tunnel is different than outdoor. So you will not be able to provide, a, you will not be able to, es like, to uh, estimate how much water is being lost by your plant. So using the soil moisture sensors are currently the best approach for high tunnels in irrigation scheme. Systematics are okay. However, you also is applying, you are applying water by feeding. You think that your, your plants need that, that volume of water, which might be not true. So if you are a very experienced um, high tunnel grower, your, uh, the systematic irrigation or using a panel to apply the same volume every day, it's probably gonna be a good option. 
However, if you are not, if you are new, I would strongly recommend soil moisture sensors. And if from those experienced one using sensors, they're gonna see that they have a much better return and an increase in their use. So once you are finished with step two, I will move for step three, which is the pest management. Know your disease, know your insects, know your weeds. We have all the publications available for you to identify that. Know it in advance for your crop, because like I said, a disease, a insect can quickly spread in your high tunnel. For disease, do a good cultivar selection. Select cultivars that are resistant for a particular disease in your area. And you're going to do always a preventive management, which means you don't want to see the disease there. You want to first, uh, you want to first uh, apply products can, that will not allow the disease to grow in your area or use cultivars that are resistant for that disease. While insect, use the permanent exclusion system. Insects, it's more like you control it as you see there. So frequent scoutings of your high tunnels are very important. While the weed management, you're going to be doing the scouting for the insect and you need to do that. Some problems that you have that you're going to have in Alabama with uh, weeds in your high tunnel will be nutsed, will be morning glory. And those are like uh, pigweed. And those are those weeds that are very common also outdoor. So follow those. Um, know what you're going to be dealing with. So this way you can be like more in quickly on the prevention or on the management of this pests. So do those three steps and you're going to be able to see some increase on your yield. This is a data that a group of um, in the Southeast put together for how much yield can be increased in high tunnel production when compared to open field. So just take a look on the cucumber. While you can, you can yield point half pound, half pound per square feet in the open field, in a high tunnel, you can double it. And look at this spinach. You can have like almost six or nine times, 10 times, almost nine, eight times more on spinach production. Bell pepper, five times more. Tomato, you can increase four times more. So just see how better, how higher is your yield if you do a good crop management in your high tunnel. So those are the benefits of the high tunnel. If you do a good crop management, you consequently will have a higher yield than in an open field. And you're going to be adding value to that product because high tunnel is much easier for you to a management than open field, even for organic. So if you are doing a high tunnel, I would strongly recommend try to certify that high tunnel. If you certify that high tunnel for organic production, that's going to be a good approach for you to even increase your profit per area. So those are all the benefits that a high tunnel have. And when we are talking about marketing that I said that would be my last topic, I would come back for those planting dates that I talked in the beginning of my um, of these presentations. So you are looking for off-season windows. Remember, bell pepper, you don't want to harvest bell pepper of a high tunnel in June. You want to harvest that before June or after November. So that's when you have your best winter. Same thing that we talked about cabbage and, not, and, and like that, and you go on for every single crop. Do a succession of crops and planting dates. Try to diversify your production. And finally, add value for your product. Conventional versus organic, high tuna versus on open field. This way, you're going to have a higher profit and I'll optimize the use of your high tuna. So just to summarize a little bit the importance of high, of of uh, the, to the take home message from this uh, this presentation today, keep in mind that high tunnel they do have an extreme potential and they can be done in Alabama in the entire state. However, it does require investment. It is an upfront investment that you should be considering when you select uh, when you have your high tunnel selecting the high value crops can help this paying back. But remember, you need to do your crop management and your high tunnel maintenance. This is key for you to maintain that high tunnel for a long time and you don't need to do more investment or rebuild a high tunnel. And finally, playing with your mar marketing is fundamental. Play with your plant date, succession of plants. And if you need any of this information at the Alabama Extension, uh, at the ACES, we have a high tunnel crop production book that now is available. Um, 
I believe we are releasing the second edition of this high tunnel crop production handbook, and it's going to be available uh, online. And you can download that and even read from your cell phone. So those are all informations that you have available. And if you still have any question, you can contact me or contact our agent. We can come together with a plan to help with any problem. And let me know if you guys have any questions.